but we're on lesson 63 and we were talking about Islam, um, this new religion that um, formed in the year 600 AD. The Muslims, Muslims were submitted people to Islam. You know, Muslim and Arabs are not necessarily the same thing. Uh, Muslims are the religion, is the religion that they're submitted to their religion, and Arabs are those ethnic people that live there. In fact, there are a lot of Arab Christians, so you can't say that all Arabs are um, Muslims. In fact, there have been a lot of Muslims that I know that have come out of Islam and became Christians. But many of them have to be very secret because they can't let their family know because they, they could actually be killed by their family or, or by um, their so-called religious, especially if they're living in a country that has claimed to be full-on Islam. So there's a lot of um, animosity, a lot, a lot of problems when a, a Muslim comes to know Jesus. Um, I had a, we had a guy come and stay with us. His name was Walid Chubat, and he was an ex-terrorist. Um, he fought the holy war called Jihad um, in Israel. He actually had been put in prison there, and he found that the Muslim terrorists were worse than the Jews. So when he met a Christian, and the Christian, Christian started talking about the love of God, he realized he was missing out. And what he was missing out on was love. He also said um, that he had been studying other false religions. He had been studying Mormonism. And he's told me, he said, Mormonism is not a lot different than the Muslim faith, or the Muslim beliefs. So, so I thought, how could that be? We're talking about totally two different religions. He says, no, no, the same thing. Muhammad saw this angel and how it progressed through, and the same thing with Joseph Smith and, and the, the Mormons and how they have to work through all of these different different laws and rules, you know, and then they don't really get to um, go to so-called heaven. And the heaven that they're thinking of is just where the, the, the diehard um, leaders, the diehard elders get to go with many, many wives. Man, I thought, it does sound a lot sim similar. Well, you'll know that the enemy's tactics are similar, and a lot of false religions are very, very much alike. Um, you think, how did the enemy get mankind so mixed up? When we have the truth, the love of God, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believe in him shall not perish but have everlasting life, you know, and we have the good news. False religion is bad news very bad news. That's what I have to say. So going on with Islam, um, salvation is um, by deeds, but really you don't, you don't really get a chance if you're just a normal um, follower of Islam, really to get to that, that level that you'd be able to even go to heaven. So they focus mo mainly on the, the instruction of works, that you have to work your way and then you get your, your points. I say points as you try to get your points so you can climb up that ladder to get to get the so-called scary God up there. <sighs> Two classes of people in, in Islam, it'd be the submitted, the Muslims, and the infidels. They would call you an infidel if you did not um, believe the way they believed. Infidels, they basically um, you could actually, in a holy war, they could be killed. Uh, you know, they didn't have to, you know, they, they could lie to them. They could do any in the name of jihad, holy war. The Quran. Quran was, is their holy book. And it was ordered by Muhammad, but it really wasn't written to what it is now until 150 to 200 years after Muhammad died. And then it was modified by the House of Islam. So it was changed many times. Many rules changed. Uh, the, um, the idea of Jesus. So I think, well, if you say to them, who is Jesus? It, oh, yeah, he was, he's a prophet. He's a good teacher. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We believe in him. But they, we don't believe. They don't believe that he was God and he's the son of God. And they deny that he even died on the cross. And they deny the resurrection of Christ. 
So they will say, yeah, and you know what? It's the same thing that um, that Mormons say too, kind of weird. But anyway, um, what a good Muslim would do, you know, the, the young men, they were to recite over and over thousands and thousands of times, God is not father, God is not a son. God is not a father, God is not a son. In fact, when I visited um, in Jerusalem in the Dome of the Rock, which is a mosque, we went in, and as we saw above, it was written in Arabic, all around the top of the Dome of the Rock, um, said, God is not begotten, God is not beget. What that means is, God is not a father, God is not a son. So right there, they're, they're blaspheming, or, or they're putting down, putting down and denying Jesus Christ. To get any so-called points, they have what they call five pillars. These five pillars are basically Islamic belief. The first pillar being there's no God but Allah. No God but Allah. And then the, the, the second being we, they have to say all these prayers over and over, five times a day, the same prayers, ritualistic prayers, over and over. And then the third pillar being they have to give to the poor of Islam. So they have to give some of their money away to help and to donate it to Islam. Number four, they have to fast during the time of Ramadan, their holy day. And the last one is they have to make a pilgrimage. Pilgrimage, they have to travel to the city of Mecca in their lifetime. Quite a big thing to do to, for some Muslims to travel that far. But anyway, that's their, some of their points, their rules that they have to, that they, that they have to abide by. Their leader, their spokesman, was called um, Iman. And the Iman would give them strict rules, and these strict rules would, would be called the Sharia rules. And their legal system is the Sharia law. This is how to dress and how to live. Every part of their, their being, whatever they did, they had to do exactly about go by this rule. Their whole life would be ruled. There were harsh punishments against if you didn't follow these rules, really harsh punishments like being stoned to death or having your hand cut off. I mean, it's really, really harsh. In fact, nowadays in some countries, if you have a cell phone, that you could be put to death just because you have a cell phone because they don't want you talking to the outside world. They want you right in their little cult, remember? They demand allegiance. They persecute. There's lots of persecution of Christians um, and you know Jews, of course, both, um, especially in the terrorist groups. Now, not all the groups of Muslim are terrorist group. Some of them are, are just caught in this, this um, religion that is, is so, so um, just engulfing and controlling, you know, and, and others, you know, are all out terrorists. The vast majority, like I said, are not terrorists. And um, it's like this cruel taskmaster they have to stay in. It's called legalism. This is a very legalistic, a very rule-oriented religion. When I said the denominations, remember we had the Sunnis, the Sunni uh, and the Shiites. They divided right after um, Muhammad died into these two groups and because they had a dispute on who was going to succeed. Well, the Sunnis now, um, you'll see most of Saudi Arabia in that area would be the Sunnis. The Shiites now, you'll see in the countries of Iran, Iraq, and Syria. And they, like I said, they'll even fight among each other. <clears throat> mosques. The mosques started, well, the first one was built in Medina. Um, right after, or maybe before the time of Muhammad, Muhammad dying. They also consider um, Jerusalem a holy city. Although Muhammad never went to Jerusalem, so to me that's pretty much of a farce. But they do. They put, put their control, they have their control in the Dome of the Rock, which sits right on top of the Temple Mount. So there's all kinds of, um, you know, just violence going on there against, you know, the Jews. And the Jews trying to get back the Temple Mount, and they there have the Dome of the Rock there. It's a crazy, crazy place in Jerusalem. Terrorist groups. Okay. You'll know terrorist groups by their names, and sometimes you'll hear it in the news, so I'm going to tell you their names. The Taliban, they live up towards Afghanistan. They're Sunnis, but they're a terrorist group we've known. Hamas is in um, Palestine, you know, that area in Jer fighting over Jerusalem, that area, those Muslims. Hezbollah up there in um, Lebanon. We also have um, Boko Haram and a bunch of Muslim groups in Africa. 
We have the Pakistani Muslims up, up, up north of India. So there's all different. And then there's ISIS. ISIS means the Islamic State. And they've been really, really radical terrorists. So if you hear these, these names of these terrorists, you'll hear them in the news. You'll know they're Muslim terrorists. The Shiites out in Iraq tend to be um, on the terrorist side at times too. So, and I won't get into that. During this last refugee cri uh, crisis, when um, the country of Syria was attacked, different Muslim nations attacking, it's very complicated. But just to know that there's what happened out of all that and all that war were refugee camps. And there's refugee camps in Lebanon, which is by Syria, in Iran, in Jordan, Jordan. A friend of mine has gone in with Face of Harvest, it's called, and they're going in to bring the gospel to the Muslim in the refugee camps. I'm telling you, there's many, many, especially women and children, that have come to know Jesus. There's a great move of God in the refugee camps. And in fact, sometimes going in there, you, the, the people that go in there just to bring medical supplies are attacked. My friend, they attacked her um, tent and st um, started on fire. She could look over to the city of Damascus, which was in Muslim territory, and it was on fire. It's, it's a very radical area in, in the Middle East. So going on... Um, when I think about ISIS, I've, the Islamic State, I've heard uh, one Muslim say, um, you know, if ISIS re represents Islam, there's no way I want to be a Muslim anymore. If you were going to go by this terrorist group, you would not want to be a Muslim anyway. So it's, many of them are coming out of, of Islam because they're longing for the love of God. You know, and the thing about Muslims coming to Christ. When you think, okay, they actually did a poll and they interviewed a lot of different um, Muslims that became Christians and they asked why, what made you come to Christ? Well, number one was the love of God and because the Christians loved their enemies and they became examples in loving them and they had never heard of anyone loving their enemies before. Also, the Bible, how accurate the Bible was when some of them started studying the Bible, they, they realized this really is the inspired word of God, the Holy Spirit telling them. Um, another, but, another, which I think is pretty important, that a lot of Muslims have come to Christ because they have been having dreams or visions of him. And I actually prayed with a couple that ha that actually, a couple people that have had visions and one um, had a near death experience and I went over that before. And a friend of mine, Debbie Bryson, she has prayed with them too. She said, Marianne, do you know the Muslims? This Muslim woman that she told me that she had a, a dream of Jesus, her and her husband both. And when they dream of Jesus, it's always this, 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 wonderful, wonderful figure of a man that they just feel perfectly at peace with. Like he's the Prince of Peace and they long for that peace and they're ready to know Jesus. How, it gives me shivers, how wonderful is that? You see, this so-called Allah is an unapproachable God. There's no way they can really know him. They just have to follow the rules. That's not the way the true living God is. He loves us. And that love is a personal, personal love that we become, that God becomes our friend. He becomes our Abba Daddy. You know, that's the kind of love that they're longing for. Like anyone else that's lost in a, in a false religion. So let's pray right now. Lord, I just pray for any Muslim that we know right now, those Muslims, I pray that you would touch them, that they would have dreams and visions, and that we would have the opportunity to lead them to you, Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen.